at heart rejoice who seek for the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek always the face of the Lord. And then of God, our mark, our aspect love. Grace of thy never the Lord that we grace and peace be with you. Peace be seated. It's a huge joy for me to be here in St. Bridget's Church this morning and to be gathering with representatives of the Brynamore Mission Area now as we gather together to affirm our life as a mission area within the Diocese of St. Asaph. Goodness knows the last 18 months have been a huge challenge to us all. And as we see merely by looking around the effects of the virus, and it's with joy that we gather together this morning to reaffirm our common life and commit to the future that God offers to us. And so in this spirit, I invite you to join with me in prayer. And we'll pray the prayer in our service box, Father of Glory. Father of Glory, holy and eternal, look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness, your radiance transform our lives, and your spirit draw us to that love, shown and offered to us mercy of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so we pray together. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent for the sake of gives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We stand and end of the Gloria. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thank God, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. The Lord be with you. And also with you. With you, let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience, and the comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting love, which you have given to us in our Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. 
Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Hearken diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in fatness. <clears throat> Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call nations that you know not, and nations that you knew you not shall run to you, because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and return not thither but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. This is the word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, the precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. The precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, it revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted, it gives wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. The precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. In them your servant finds instruction. Great reward is in their keeping. But who can detect all his errors? From hidden faults, acquit me. The precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. From presumption restrain your servant, and let it not rule me. Then shall I be blameless, clean from grave sin. The precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is god breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in the view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather round them a great number of teachers 
to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. This is the word of the Lord. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, The Father's voice you have never heard, his form you have never seen, and you do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe him who he has sent. You search the Scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that bear witness to me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive glory from men. I know that you have not the love of God within you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe who receive glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. It is Moses who accuses you, on whom you set your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe me. For he wrote of me, if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Please be seated. As I said at the beginning of our liturgy, it is a huge joy to be with the representatives of Brynamol Mission Area today. And the first thing I want to do, although I've said it in different forums across the diocese for some months now, is to express my gratitude to you, the people of God, for continuing our life as a church. Goodness knows the challenges have probably been greater for us, except for perhaps the generation who can recall the last years of the Second World War. And we have had to face many challenges, not least, the closure of our churches. But we have found new ways to worship. We're online and streaming even now, and the future of our worship will probably be blended. Blended is the word of the future, as we blend the old with what we have learned during the time of lockdown. But thank you for being faithful for continuing to follow our Lord, for being determined to help our church survive. And although there are challenges ahead, I look to the future with huge confidence, because what the people of God in the Tyle Asaph have proved is that God is with us, and that the grace of God can find new ways to get through the cracks and to open the way of the Lord, even in the most difficult of circumstances. Today, the readings that have been proclaimed to us are the readings for Bible Sunday. 
And as you'd expect, they all speak of the Word of God. But I'd like to ask you to reflect particularly on our New Testament reading this morning. Our New Testament reading comes from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. Paul and from his family. And Paul, in this extract, speaks to Timothy and passes on, as it were, the message of good news for his disciple to become a follower of Jesus, as Paul himself was a follower of Jesus. I wonder what you make of the word tradition. Some people, when they hear the word tradition, light up because they think that the church is about passing on the traditions of the past into the future. They like our worship to be traditional, for the priests to be dressed in the robes of the 5th century or possibly the Reformation in the 16th at morning prayer. They like our prayers to be close to the 1662 Book of Common Prayer. They like our services conducted as they were in their childhood. For others, the word tradition is almost anathema. It breathes of everything which is old and stale and dusty. And there are Christians who want the radically fresh and new of God, both people with their foot to the floor on the accelerator and others with their foot to the floor on the brake. But we are called by Jesus Christ to be one people. We are called by Jesus Christ to inhabit tradition, but not perhaps in the way you expect it. Because tradition, properly understood, is the handing over of those things that we believe to be most important and true. And Paul, in his letter to Timothy, encourages him to be someone who indulges in traditio, in handing over. Remember, he says, the things that you learned when you were a child, and then be faithful in transmitting to those you encounter. Preach the word in season and out of season. Do the work of an evangelist, he invites his young disciple to undertake. Because the Christian faith, as one Archbishop of Canterbury once said, is one beggar telling another where to first. And in our Gospel reading, which you heard proclaimed to us this morning, Jesus is unabashed, unashamed, to say that he is the fulfilment of the scriptures. That all the scriptures are written to point us in the direction of the living Lord. The marvellous thing about Rinnemore Mission Area is that it has some of the most ancient churches in our diocese. Churches which perhaps even go older than the time of St. Asa, St. Asa himself. Certainly you have the church of Clan Asa, and that probably goes back to before the cathedral, which we like to think of as the mother church of the diocese. And in the diocese, we sometimes like to call ourselves 
the tiny Asa, the family of St. Asa. In a couple of years, we'll be celebrating the traditional date and the 1,450th anniversary of the consecration of St. Asa as a bishop. <coughs> and what does all that diocesan life add up to? What has it been all about? It has been about passing on from one generation to another the invitation of Jesus to life. When we come into church, we do two things at every service. We proclaim the word of God and we acknowledge the sacraments. We proclaim the word of God as the lively oracles of God, as it says very simplistically on a Facebook post I read recently. If you want to understand the world, then you can't do better than to read the Maker's instructions. And the Church sees the Bible as the living Word of God, sent to us as a love letter from God himself to stimulate our discipleship, to stimulate our understanding of the love of God and the call to justice in the world. And when we come to church, we also come to celebrate the grace of God, God's undying love reaching out to his people, shared with us in and through the sacraments. It was our Lord himself who said to us at the Last Supper, do these things in remembrance of me. And it is an amazing thing for me to think that nigh on a thousand years, there will have been priests who have stood at this altar and reenacted the Last Supper, invoking the Holy Spirit on the gifts of bread and wine that the people of God may be fed with the love of God. This is the inheritance into which you and I enter in. An inheritance that goes back to Jesus himself and an invitation to encounter through Jesus the love and blessing of God. So as we celebrate the Eucharist this morning, as we repeat the tradition which has been given to us, let us resolve two things. Firstly, to open our hearts afresh to the grace of God in our lives. And secondly, to be faithful in handing on our knowledge of that grace and the message of our gospel to the communities in whom we live. And for this message, and for that task, thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And so I invite you now to stand with me and to say the words of the Nicaea Constantinopolitan <coughs> Creed, our profession of faith. We believe in one God.
with whom let us pray.
May the achievements of the Dissent Mission Week lead to future discipleship and growth of the faith. And grant our Mission Area Council, we pray, the understanding to communicate your vision in action and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious, hear us. Almighty Father, bring your blessing and support to all who are troubled in body, mind and spirit. To the anxious, send calm and enliven and bring confidence to those impaired by apathy. To the abused, bring safe affection and send an angel to forestall abusers. <coughs> to the sick, bring healing and to all carers young and old, family and professional, send wisdom, wisdom and kindliness, as well as skill and knowledge. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty Father, as we give thanks for your gifts to us and your holy word, we remember the people who may first have introduced us to you, to our mentors, family, loved ones, who are now in heaven. May they all rest in peace and rise in glory. And may your comfort reach out to all who suffer bereavement. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior. Bishop Gregory, we ask you on behalf of the missionary of Rinnemore to reaffirm us in our ministry and mission in our churches and communities. People of God, Christ invites each of us to faithful discipleship and service. We are all called to different ministries as we seek to live out God's love. As baptised disciples of Christ, will you renew your commitment to the loving service of God, of one another, and of all people. Will you seek to develop the faith, gifts, and skills which God has given you as you share in Christ's mission and ministry? Will you seek to perform your mission prayerfully and in a spirit of mutual respect and collaboration? Will you reflect with prayer, penitence and thanksgiving on what it means to be a follower of Christ in all your relationships? Will you live your life in a way that will help others to know Jesus Christ? And will you humbly and joyfully share your faith with them? Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's dark places and to share with others the peace of God which passes all understanding? And may God, who is faithful, strengthen you in wisdom and love that you may fulfil those obligations to which you have been called to his glory in the growth of the church in Brynamore Mission Area. And so I invite you to say with me, Lord Jesus, we give you our hands to do your work. We give you our feet to go your way. We give you our eyes to see as you do. We give you our tongues to speak your words. We give you our minds that you may think in us. We give us your spirits that you may pray in us. Above all, we give you our hearts. We give you our whole lives that you may grow in us. 
day of reaffirmation of our mission together, let us express our unity and love in Christ as a pledge of all that we hope for in the future. In these Covid times, we may not greet each other in the way we would like, with a hug or a kiss or an embrace, unless, of course, you're sitting next to someone in your own bubble. But find a way to acknowledge one another as I invite you to share the peace with one another. Hang never the rag with a vulgar da bob amser. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one other sign of God's peace. Thanks. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the one vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice of our hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our job, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks, Holy Father, all powerful and ever living God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so with 
hosts of angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim the glory of your name and join in their unending hymn of praise. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Saviour taught us in English, my and goodbye, we firmly pray. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. 
Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I have no to see you, but don't say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ, peace and love, turn this way.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. 